and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I've left it far, far too late to attempt a puzzle today, but I have to do it. Um, so I'm recording this at half past six in the evening. Life has just got away from me today. And um, this this is something of a disaster because basically um, the video is meant to go live at half past eight. And if I can't solve this puzzle on screen, well, if I can't solve it relatively quickly and relatively smoothly, there might not be a video tonight and that would be just, just awful. Um, now, the puzzle that I'm scheduled to attempt, which is the one on the screen, is called Hidden Keys and it's by Su Joyku. And this is a debut on the channel for Su Joyku, I believe, very uh, a pseudonym of which I approve mightily. Um, I don't know why it's called Hidden Keys. I suppose the answer might be that the keys are hidden, but I, I can't see it. It's a rule set that's very, very standard. So if, you, if you're looking at this grid thinking you know what the rules are, you're probably right. Um, and we're gonna have a go at this in a moment or two. It's three stars out of five for difficulty. So mm, <laughs> it might be doable uh, in the time allotted. Um, I really, really hope so. Uh, it, would be, it would be such a disaster. I've realized I'm discombobulated. I've not got my right glasses on. Everything is going wrong. Uh, right, I've got my right glasses on. I can see um, I haven't got the lights on, which is bad because there's some sort of storm brewing outside as well. So it's, it's gone all dark. Uh, what what else can I tell you about before I read you the rules to Sue Joyku's puzzle? Um, not a great deal. Just as normal, it's an appeal. If you do enjoy the channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, you could join us on Patreon. Everything that we do around the channel is included in the video description under the video. There's all sorts of extra stuff there. So there's links to our Patreon where we've got the best Sudoku club on earth. Every month we do new Sudoku hunts there. There's one running at the moment. Um, and there's lots of crossword content, bonus content as well over on Patreon. There's links to the Discord server, which is the largest puzzle community on earth. Um, I kid you not. There's links to our apps. Um, so we have a whole suite of apps. We're very, very proud of our apps. Uh, and the difference between our Sudoku apps and everyone else's Sudoku apps is that all of our apps contain handcrafted puzzles, only handcrafted puzzles, and what's more, handcrafted puzzles by the best Sudoku setters on the planet. Um, so we think they differentiate themselves quite starkly, and we certainly, um, I, well, we know that you will, you'd enjoy solving those puzzles. So, so that's our apps. What else am I meant to mention? Mark always says I don't mention enough stuff. There's merchandise, all sorts of things. It's all in the video description. But the opening link under the puzzle should, should well, the opening link in the video description should be to this puzzle, Sue Joy Q's Hidden Keys puzzle. And I'm now going to read the rules and hopefully solve it with the sort of alacrity one can only dream of. Um, these are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits in a cage do not repeat and sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. So, um, ah, no, I've just noticed that that, that first bit of that, those rules is not necessary, is it? Though, so what we're being told is that those five cells sum to 32, these four, five cells sum to 17. But it is not possible. All of these cages exist in a straight line. So none of them could have had a repeated digit in them anyway. Um, and on each of the marked diagonals, digits do not repeat as well. So this diagonal here needs to contain uh, the digits one to nine once each. And this diagonal here needs to contain the digits one to nine once each. I do not know that clock is, that clock is not right. That clock is not right because there was many more um, than the, the correct number of chimes for that. that. So. I will fix the clock later as well. Um, what else do we need to say? Nothing. L do have a go at the puzzle. Way to play is to click the link under the video. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking as the rain teams down outside. Um, now, can I see anything immediately? I can see not a great deal. There are some cages here that only have two options. So a 14 cage in two cells has got to be a 6, 8 or a 5, 9 combination. A 6 cage has to be 1, 5 or 2, 4. A 15 cage has to be 7, 8 or 6, 9. The 17 cage at the bottom, that actually only has two options, I think. Um, so a 5 cell 17 cage could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 7. 
or one, two, three, five, six. So it definitely has one, two, and three in it. Right, so that's got me interested in this cell. And that's because that 33 cage, I think, has a sort of similar type restriction to the 17 cage. So can we make 33 in five digits without using seven? Then the cage would be a maximum of 98654, which is 15 and 17, which is 32, which is not 33. There is a knowledge bomb for you. So there does have to be a seven in there. So this has to contain seven, eight and nine. And that means, look, that this corner cell is only able to be four, five, or six by the mechanism that is Sudoku. It sees one, two, three in its row and seven, eight, nine in its column. So Sujoiku is making me do Sudoku very early on in this puzzle, outrageously. Um, now, what is that telling me? I have not got a Scooby-Doo. Um, We've got another relatively large cage over here. So, but this one, this one could have us. Um, sorry, this one doesn't have to have a seven in it because we just worked out that nine eight six five four adds to thirty two. So we don't have to have a seven. We do. Ah, okay. ah, yes. Okay. Well, we do have to have an eight and a nine in this cage. That is still necessary. Let's try and do it out just to prove it to ourselves. So, if we do nine plus seven six five four. You can see that's 14 and that's that's nowhere near enough, is it? In fact, that, the number I got in my head there was so... No, that's only 31. Uh, actually, I did the maths in my head wrongly first time. So 9, 8 is 17. Uh, sorry, we're trying to miss out the 8, aren't we? 9, 7, 6 is 22. And then 5 and 4 is 9. So that gives us 31. So there is a 9 and an 8 in this cage. And that means we can ask where 9 and 8 go in the bottom row of the grid because they can't go there, they can't go there, and they definitely can't go in a 17 cage. So we have a 9-8 pair revealed to us. Uh, it's, again, it's a bit Sudoku-y that, isn't it? Right, so now I can see some interesting things, perhaps, relating to... Ah, all right, well, this can't be 8 or 9 now, because the, seven, the 15 cage here must have an 8 or a 9 in it, because it's either 8, 7 or 9, 6, and that's an 8 or a 9, so that can't possibly be an 8 or a 9. And what's more, look, none of these digits can be 8 or 9, which feels like it's... Oh, right, this is, uh, this is lovely, actually. This is lovely. Okay. So the question we need to ask ourselves now is where do 9 and 8 go in the top row, I think? Because, uh, sorry, and the reason for that is the 14 cage also has a 9 or an 8 in it because it's either 9, 5 or 6, 8. So that pairs off here. So if we look at this column, if we look at um, column 2 and column 8, these two cells cannot be 8 and 9. And we've already worked out that these two cells couldn't be eight or nine. It's just we weren't thinking about it in the context of the top row. But that means the 25 cage does have eight and nine in it, which means it also has a one in it because the other three digits in this cage uh, are going to add up to eight. And if we weren't to include a one, we'd have to include a minimum of two, three, and four, and two, three, and four add up to nine. So there is definitely a one in this cage. Uh, that is absolutely, this is sick. This is a sick beginning to this puzzle. Because now, okay, let me tell you something now. I know the composition of this six cage. And it's, it's, it's actually very beautiful, the reason I know. And I know, I know that's, that might seem slightly odd to describe a Sudoku as beautiful. But to me, this, is, this sort of thing is beautiful. Um... So see if you can work out how I know the composition of this six cage. Uh, and I'll give you a couple of moments, Agad Mator style. For those of you who managed to do it, congratulations. The reason is that this, uh, this one here causes an X-wing on ones in this column and this column. And what you might say is an X-wing. And that is a very good question. And I will explain. I think I was thinking about X-Wings because of the great big X in the grid. But 
we can see that 1 is not in these cells now. We can certainly can't put 1 in 33 or 32 cages because the maximum that four digits can add up to in Sudoku if the digits are all different is 9, 8, 7 and 6. Well, they only add up to 30. So there's no way we can put a 1 in these cages. So 1s are not here. 1's not here. 1's not here because of the 17 cage, which has definitely got a 1 in it. So the 1s in columns 1 and 9 are in this little configuration of digits. And you might say, well, what does that do to the 6 cage? Well, the critical thing, and X-Wings actually, we get a lot of questions uh, by email about X-Wings. They seem to be just poorly understood patterns in Sudoku. And there's no reason to find X-Wings complicated. But you have to learn how to ask the right questions when you find an X-Wing. And the question that I want to ask you is, it will sound facetious, but it is important. How many ones do we anticipate there being in this puzzle in row two? That's the question. Now, now hopefully there will be a chorus, a future chorus um, uh, of one one. There's going to be one one, isn't there? in row two in this puzzle. Assuming we, we solve the puzzle correctly, there's going to be one one in that row. How many ones do we think there are going to be in row eight? Well, hopefully your answer to that is also there's going to be one one there. So, so we know that in these two rows, altogether, there are two ones. Well, let me ask you a question. How many ones are there in the green cells? We said there was a one in one of those two cells in column one. That's one one. We said there was a one in one of those two cells in column nine. So that's another one. So that's two ones. So there are two ones exactly in the green cells, but we know that there are two ones altogether in those two rows. So how many ones are there in those cells? And your answer to that should be zero one, Simon, because if there was another one or more than one, another one in the blue cells, there would be more than two ones in these two rows of the Sudoku. And what would that mean? Well, that would mean that there would be a repeated one in a row and there cannot be a repeated one in a row. So, so altogether, that's rather beautiful, isn't it? Because that means this six cage look can't be one five anymore and has to be two four. And that means that this 10 cage is not 28 and it's not 46 so that is 19 or 37 now i can see immediately ah no i i well i can see immediately something but i can see something else that that, that becomes that follows as a result of that so let's let's have a quick look at that if this is 19 how does this 25 cage work well we know there's a 1 and a 9 in it so the one and the nine would have to be there. Well, what does that mean for these squares? Well, these squares would have to include um, the balancing digits, if you like, that, that are making up the extra, the extra seven that we need for this cage, because we know it's got one, eight and nine in it. One, eight and nine add up to 18. So there are two digits in this cage in here then that would add up to seven that couldn't be one six because that would repeat the one. They couldn't be two five and they couldn't be three four. So there would be no way of seeing that. Yeah, I mean, the way I'm explaining that, the, the way I got that so quickly is that the way I was interpreting this 25 cage was as an eight nine pair with three cells that added to eight. So one, once I see this two four here, it's grating with me because I know there are only two ways of making eight in three different Sudoku cells. 125 and 134. So I can I, I don't know if I'm seeing that more quickly than some of you or less quickly, but the moment this is 19, I'm seeing there's a problem with this cage because the one and the nine go there and I can't see how to make the sort of the eight triple work anymore. Um, so this is not 19, this is three. Ah no, no, lost my army. It's three seven. Now, so now do we know oh hang on, this one nine might not be right. But we um now do we know what this is? Because, yeah, I mean, if, if, the, if the three cells that are adding to eight are one, three, four now, you'd have to put the three and the four there. And this would have to be, these squares, squares would have to be one, eight, nine. And this would have to be five, six. And that would have to be a five or a six. Actually, I've not used the diagonals yet at all. Ah, 
All right, I'm going to make a strange pencil mark. Boom. I don't know if that's that's a sensible pencil mark to make, um, but I can see now because um, I've started to think about the diagonals. If we if we think about the disposition of digits around the x wing, we know that in we know that it's either going to be the ones are either going to be like that, and let's imagine they were like that. If they were like that, where would the one go on the negative diagonal on this diagonal? Well, you can see that it would it couldn't be in those three and it couldn't be in those three. So it would have to be in those three digits, which is why this pencil mark would then be valid. But the only other option for the ones would be in those two positions. Now, if the ones are in those positions, one of those three must be a one in the middle box. So the one in the middle box is on. It's sort of in this dice five shape. Uh, and it is on a diagonal cell. Uh, that feels like it feels like I'm meant to discover that 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 feels like a sort of a potentially sensible thing. Two is very restricted in this column because two can't go there because of this two four pair and two can't go in a 33 cage. So two in this column is in one of these two positions. I'm actually going to try and record that. I'm just going to make a little blue, a blue. I don't want to do this is what I'm saying, because that pencil mark is hard to hard to recover from because a corner pencil mark, as I've done in in, in box five, is telling me that that the digit one is in one of the corner marked positions. So if I put two twos in column column one across box boundaries, that's going to confuse me. So we'll try and use colours. Now two, ah no, bobbins. So two in this column is different, isn't it? Because two in this column, although it can't go here, it can go in the 32 cage. If it didn't go in the 32 cage, then we'd have an X-wing on twos in these positions, and that would lock two out of all. Ah, I thought, no, I thought I'd done it then. That's not true. It, well, it would be an X-wing on twos, but it wouldn't. It would knock it would knock a two nine out of that that cage it would knock two oh well it would knock two out of the 25 cage so it would force this to be uh three and four it would force that to be a three four pair oh secret ah oh my goodness me this is awful I should have thought of this immediately. Uh, mm, okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> right, let, let's go. Let's rewind somewhat and have a look at the bottom row of the grid. Okay, now there is a Sudoku secret. Now, it's something I only tell my very favourite people, but if you're still watching me on this Saturday evening in the rain, you're definitely one of my favourite people. And the Sudoku secret is the following. Any complete row, any complete column, and any complete box of a Sudoku, because of the rules of Sudoku, contains the digits 1 to 9 once each. And if we sum those digits, we get 45. So I can just do maths on this bottom row. Those five cells add up to 17. Those two cells add up to 17. So that gives me 34, which means these two cells must add up to 11 to make the whole row add up to 45, which means this square is either a 7 a five or a six, depending on what that one is. Now, oh, okay. So, a moment. Should I have been doing this before? Then, I have a horrible feeling. Um, thirty-two. Right. These four cells add up to 13 using the secret so they have well we know they have to include a one they don't have to include a two um uh, so if this is as small as it can be it would be five and that means the maximum these three digits can add up to is eight
Ah, oh, goodness me. Right. Okay. Yeah, I have missed something here. Um, I've missed secretage, secret, secret squirrelage. Yes. Okay. This is, it's, it's quite lovely actually, to be honest. It's quite lovely, but it's, it's fairly straightforward if you start to think about the secret in the, in terms of these two columns. Okay, so the way the way I the way I noticed this was I thought about that being the lowest it could be and therefore maximizing these digits and we worked out the maximum value of those three digits was eight, which means that the maximum digit I could put into any of those three squares is a five, because eight could be one, two, five. Um, but I certainly can't put a six or a seven into these squares. That's not going to work. Now look at it, look at how it works in this column. It's the same maths, but this time we're adding four to 33 as a minimum, which means the maximum value of these three squares is also eight because four plus 33 is 37 and 45 minus 37 is eight. So again, these squares cannot include six and seven. Well now, but remember, you have to remember that this 25 cage definitely hasn't got six or seven in it because it's got eight and nine in it, and the other three digits are also adding to eight, which means the maximum digit you can put in the 25 cage is a five as well as the nine and eight. So six and seven in the top row can only go in these two positions. And I have a horrible feeling that that should have dropped out immediately once I got this eight, nine pair. Um, yeah, well, let's think about this now then. What is that doing? Right, I know what this is doing. Okay, so there's a little trick we can do now, which is rather pretty. A bit more, a bit more maths, but okay. All right, what, what, <laughs> let's do the trick. Um, these digits add up to 30. These add up to 15. So what do those two add up to? these two digits must add up to 15. But these two digits are sort of in an arrangement with these two digits, look. So if these add up to 15, and these are going to be the other of six and seven and eight and nine, these also add up to 15. In fact, these, these two digits, one way of thinking about it is that those two digits must be the same as those two digits, mustn't they? Um, and that means if these add up to 15 and these add up to 14, in this column, these four digits add up to 29, and 29 in four digits can only be seven, eight, nine, and five. So there is that this must have five in it. That's really, really cool. Feels right, doesn't it? I think that's right. That feels logical. So this, this has got to be not six, eight. So this is five, nine, which means this is eight. Okay, so this is eight, this is seven, this is six, this is nine. These two squares are now a seven, eight pair. <laughs> what on earth does that do? <laughs> you may well ask. I haven't got a clue. Oh, how can, sorry, how can this not do anything? I'm, I'm so sorry that I can't see this. Oh, this is awful. I don't know what to do with that. Um, ah, that's bad, isn't it? That is bad. Um, sorry, I haven't got a clue what I meant to do with that. Does it matter that... Oh, I don't know. Ah, oh, my mind's gone blank. I've got... I, I, I thought we were, we were getting somewhere. Do I know... Okay, I must know what these two cells add up to in the corner, I suppose, now. I could do maths, couldn't I, in the top row? So I've got... Uh, yes. Oh, well, it's obvious. These, these two squares have to add up to seven. They're, they're, what's ever, they're whatever is not used in this cage. So if, if, this, if this has got three and four in it in those two positions, these squares are a two-five pair. And that would have to be a two. 
And that would have to be a 5. And that would have to be a 6. And that doesn't work. Wow. Well, okay, that's it. That's interesting. Why? I mean, I can see it doesn't work mathematically. I think there's going to be an elegant way of me of me demonstrating that. Let me just mull that over for a minute. Well, I think, well, I think the most elegant way is just almost to ask how big can this digit be? So, yeah, I mean, that's the way to do it, isn't it? Um, yeah, I see. Right, so we know these five squares add up to 32. Now, if we did make this a five, that means these are the most they could be. They're adding up to eight, but they're they're adding up to eight without using five. So they'd have to be one, three, and four. So that would make the maximum value of this digit four. Now, if this, on the other hand, is any bigger than five, let's say it's six, then the maximum size of this, these digits is seven, and they still can't include a five because they'd have to be one, two, four then. And if this is seven, they'd have to be one, two, three. So the, so the thing is, this digit strangely cannot be five even though it sort of felt like it might be able to. And once you get a five here, that can't be five either. So in the top row, suddenly five gets shunted into the 25 cage, which allows me to know how it's made up. This has got to be one, two, five, eight, nine. And the two, look, is in one of those two cells. Now, ah, well, that's great. So my purple, my, sorry, my blueification has paid up, paid off here because this now can't be blue, which was my two color. So that becomes two, and that's gonna unwind my one X wing, which was the green digits. So the one in this column now has to go here, which means the one in column nine goes here. And now, well, now I'm 10, oh, well, and we know there are, oh, I'm gonna get a three in the corner. I was gonna say, I've got a three, four pair here, but I was actually also going to try and do maths on this column, because now I've got 33 here, plus one plus two is 36. So I know those two squares add up to nine, which means that this square can't be a four anymore. And if that square can't be a four, that square can't be a seven because we know those two added up to 11. So, so now these add up to nine. So these add up to nine as well because they've got the same options. Yeah, that must be right, mustn't it? Because if that's 5, 4, this is 3, 6, and vice versa. So these add up to 9. 9, 10, 32 is 42. So this square is a 3. Oh, well, that does it. If that square's a 3, that's definitely not a 3. So that's a 4. And then this is a... That's 3 in the corner. That's 3 in the spotlight proving its position okay so now we know that the other corners we know they have to add up to nine don't we because these had to add up to nine on this side okay so now well now our, our 17 cage is one two three four seven which is one of the two options we identified for it earlier this is not three or seven This 32 cage, let's actually just put in the options, I think. Oh, this is two, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, that square is not seven, eight, or nine. So that's two or six. That's not six. All right, and we can, we can get the composition of the 33 cage as well. So that's four, five, seven, eight, nine. And that's not, that's not eight. Um, that's not five or nine or seven. That's this is restricted. This is four or eight. That is not five, nine or one. So this is two or eight. This three, ah, this three is doing something. That's given me a three and a seven. Um, doesn't this, it's still not rolling over and letting us tickle its tummy, this, is it? It's still not behaving itself what is going on 
Oh, five. Right, use the diagonal, Simon. There's a five in the corner, so that's got to be a nine. That's got to be a five. Which doesn't seem to do the seven and the eight, strangely. Five in this box is now in one of those squares, so that's not five. Which means five is in one of those two squares, which is really nearly interesting, but not quite interesting enough. Um... This row, we've effectively got six digits in, haven't we? We've, we've not put in five, six, and eight. So that square is a six or an eight, I think. And these squares are... Well, oh, hang on. These squares can't be six. Right, there's a six in this row. I didn't spot that at all. Six in one of these squares. These squares here are a five, eight pair. Um... Which is, oh no, it's not. There's an 8 there. So this is 8. This is 5. And that's going to be important because, well, that is important actually, because I was wondering whether I could make this, the 8 cage, a 3 5 pair, but I don't think I can. If this was 3 5, I couldn't put a 3 in column 8 at all. So that's not 3 5, and that seems to mean that this square is the 5 in box number. Six. So this is not a five over here. We're slowly whittling. So what is this? This is one seven or two. Right. This. Well, this is not two six either. Because if that's two six, where do you put two and six in box nine? Now that is not a Schrodinger cell. It cannot simultaneously be two and six. So that doesn't work. So this is one and seven, which means bar humbug. Oh, it means that's a one. Okay, that's good. That's something. These are, these are not 8, so this is 2, no, this is 2 or 9, which gives me a 2-9 pair, which makes this a 7, aha, which means that, let's check the diagonals, we've got the middle entropy rank finished in the, in the positive diagonal, we've got 4, 5 and 6, so everything else is 1, 2, 3, 7, 8 or 9, um, we, we can get, uh, yes, we can, these digits are 3, four and six aren't they in this column so this square has to be a two which means these squares are six eight and nine which means these squares are three four and something two okay and all right what's this digit two four or eight by the medium of the medium of sudoku and ah <laughs> Okay, but we still have some more cages to play with, and I don't think I've really exploited these diagonals very fully. Let's think about how we might do that. He says, trying to look at one, two. Okay, well, that's just pure evil. <laughs> We've discovered pure evil in this puzzle. So, that digit is quite interesting. So I was looking at the diagonals and I was noticing I had quite a little bit, bit of high real estate in this column. So what can this be? Well, it can't be one or two. It can be three. Let's put three in the middle of it. Can it be four? No, it can't be four, five or six or seven or eight or nine. That is a naked single three, um, which means this square is not a three. And it means this square is not a three. And it means one of these squares. Ah, one of these squares is a three. And that's great. It does nothing at all. Um, oh, Billy Bobbins, I don't know. All right, where do we look now then? What's going to be an easy win? We could ask about, oh, I haven't got a clue. It's going to be, I think I've got a fear it's going to be Sudoku, isn't it? Six is in one of those two positions. Does that help me? No. Can we do this one seven pair? Can we, oh, can we do the ones in the middle? Or is it, or is it the diagonals that I'm missing? trick on yeah okay eight 
has to be on the diagonal in one of those three squares. Look, I've just spotted. Can we do better than that? I don't know. Um, this 11 cage can't be 2, 9 or 3, 8. So this is 4, 7 or 5, 6 now. Whatever it is, it's going to determine that cell. Which might be important. Ah, no, hang on, that's easier. 3. 3 is on this diagonal. So that's a 4, 6 pair. So that gives me a 3 here. OK, here we go. So what does that mean? Well, that's great. Yeah, OK. So the 11 cage is not 4, 7. Because if it's 4, 7... Where do we put four and seven in the bottom row? We'd have to, we'd, we'd make this cell a Schrodinger cell. That's not going to work. So this is five and six, which means this is four. This is six. Um, that is going to do something. What? I'm not sure yet, but I'm sure it's going to do something. Uh, these squares are, oh, Yes, it is. It is going to do something because in this row there is now only one position for nine, I'm noticing. Because you definitely can't put nine in a nine cage because that would be a zero. So this is a nine. That's not a nine now, which is a tiny deduction, but we'll take it. One, four, five, and seven. Right, we're going to fully pencil mark this box. One, four, five, and seven. That square sees four and five on the diagonal. So this is just one or seven now. I'm pausing because I'm presuming that's going to do something, but it doesn't actually seem to want to. Um, can we get... What's this digit? Well, this digit is... Ah, yeah, okay, this digit is an 8. Because it's 7 or 8 by Sudoku, but if it was 7, you'd have to put a 2 above it, and we can't do that. So this is 8. This is 1. Now 1 is getting whittled down from the middle box, look. One gets placed in the bottom row, which means this is two, four, seven, which means these squares have got to be nine and three, which we can actually do. Aha, three and nine go into the grid. Three has to be in one of, no, three has to be there because it's already made appearances on both diagonals. So this square is no longer a three. This square is no longer a three. So this could be three, seven, couldn't it? Um, it would be great to know. Ah, oh, yeah, of course. I didn't do this earlier. Um, so when I unwound my one X-wing, I could have. Got, you can see the one on this diagonal actually has to be in one of those two. So it's definitely not here, which unfortunately I think is not going to be useful, is it? No, it is useful because one is also not on the positive diagonal. Oh, this. Hang on. Yeah, so this one was doing this, wasn't it? So that's seven. This is now a four, five pair. This seven, eight is done. Oh, we might, it might be about to tumble, you know. This is the sort of moment where a puzzle like this could just suddenly gift all its secrets to us. Famous last words. <laughs> one, two, four, and eight in the middle box. I am going to pencil mark it. Oh no, I had a thought I, I thought I had another deduction there, but I don't. Four. So this diagonal is one, two, eight, and nine. I'm going to fill it all in. Two, eight, and nine. I know the eight is in one of those. So this can't be eight. Oh, how busy. oh, this can't be one or eight, actually. So this is two or nine. There's lots of lots of cells that getting slight oh there's a two nine pair on this diagonal wow okay so what so the, these two squares can't be two and that one can't be nine so i get a one eight pair in this box out of absolutely nowhere but didn't we just work out that Yes, I just worked out and then elided over the fact that one has to be on this diagonal and this diagonal so one is in the middle of the grid okay so one and eight go in that's going to be useful surely he says confidently. Um, yeah, that's doing the one and the seven. It's, 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 I've got excessive numbers of pencil marks. That's what's throwing me here. I've got far too many pencil marks. It's very difficult to see what's going on. That's my excuse. Um, 
this five is doing things, isn't it? Five and four. So we could take five out of these two squares. Ah, five out of those two squares. Has that done it? Have we have we now understood the world? No. Maybe. Yes, okay, I have. Look, I've got a two, four pair on this diagonal. So that becomes eight, that becomes four, that becomes two. So that becomes nine, that becomes a good grief. That just unwinds the top row altogether, which is very welcome. And that, oh, I've got, I've got a two, four pair in column six, I've never noticed. So this square is a five or a six. It's too dark for me to actually see my keyboard, so I'm going to, I'm going to mistype even more than usual. So this is a seven, eight, oh, that's beautiful. That's a seven, eight, nine, triple. So how do we make the 10 cage work? Can't be one, nine, two, seven, or three, or sorry, two, eight, or three, seven. So it's got to be six, four, and that's going to place the six, and the four, and the four, and the two, and the three, and the four, and the two over here. That's now become a nine. So this is a six, eight pair. That's become a seven out of nowhere. Uh, that digit in the middle of the grid is a five. That means we get five and six here. Uh, this is good now, which means we get six here, six here, eight here. That does the eight and the nine on the other side of the grid. These two squares, it's done, isn't it? It's going, it's going to topple. It's finally going to give up its secrets. This is nine. Um, what do we need in this box? Seven. So I've now got a two, four pair in this column, and I have not put in a nine. That's got to be nine, I think. So that's nine, that's six. This is two to complete the other diagonal. I hope I'm not going to, no, I'm not, am I? I was suddenly worried I was going to get left with a deadly pattern, but that seems to finish it. What a brilliant puzzle that is. What a debut. No, oh, I've made a mistake. What have I done down here? Is that, a, is that was that a misclick? It looks like, Oh, actually, I'm not sure. That's, let's just unwind. What did I do there? I put, oh, you know what? So let's just look at what I did there because it's quite, it's a little tiny bit instructive. I wrote six here. I put this digit in. And then I think what I did was I saw that I was taking the pencil mark position of a six in this position with the two. So I wrote the six in here, not realizing I'd already put the six in the box. So that's bad, uh, it's, it's bad, basically, it's bad. Although, okay, I don't think it's gonna matter terribly much. We can put the nine in here. This is a one, three pair. That square's a seven. I seem to remember doing that before. That square seems to be a six. This square has to be a nine. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it was, it was still basically done. It's just a little bit untidy and hopefully, whoopsie, hopefully that's gonna be better, yes. There we go. Solve counter, 69 people have solved it in two days. That seems a remarkably high number. But Su Joiku, that was a sensational debut. I enjoyed it mightily. And most importantly, it wasn't, well, I actually haven't nailed it, have I? I haven't nailed it, I've got to get on. I've got to get this, uh, I've got to put in the sort of instructions on the screen, do the intro music, do the outro music, make a thumbnail, export it, upload it do all this stuff think of a title hidden keys will that do will that explain to everybody the beauty of this puzzle and actually let me I, sh I I don't want to just turn off the webcam because this puzzle deserves it deserves plaudits it was beautiful the way that I loved the way that this eight nine pair or what I, hmm, it was this six seven pair that was really cool and I like the fact I got a three in the corner and I loved the X-Wing on ones that sort of jumped out as well. It's just beautiful. It's a really quality puzzle, really quality debut. Su Joiku, you gave me great joy for that. Thank you. I hope you gave some of the, I hope Su, joy, Su, jo, Su Joiku <laughs> gave some of the viewers joy as well. Let us know in the comments. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.